Welcome back to our course on measure theory and integration. In the previous lecture, we ended with defining Lebesgue measure. If a set is a measurable set, okay, if a set is a measurable set, then the outer measure of the particular set is called as the Lebesgue measure, and that is what we denote by me. So we ended that with that. In this lecture, we are going to state some important results based on the uh, measurable sets okay so we prove the mass propositions and there is a typo in it let me just correct it so proposition okay so it states what it states ei is a collection of uh, sequence of measurable sets okay then we'll have to prove m star of union ei is smaller than or equal summation m ei right so actually we do not have star also here okay we have the collection of measurable sets if they are measurable sets then the outer measure of the uh, measurable set is called as the lebesgue measure okay so we'll have to prove uh, this one so let us start the proof formally so if you notice here let me just uh, write down the result that we have already seen if we have a collection of which is a countable collection okay so a countable collection of sets of real numbers then outer measure of union okay outer measure just a minute outer measure of union a n is smaller than or equals summation of the outer measure of individual sets so this one we know okay so this property we call it as the uh, countable subadditivity countable subadditivity on the sets with concerning to the outer measure right here we are talk, uh, if you just notice here we are talking about the lebesgue measures so lebesgue measures are basically what they are the outer measures okay so if you just forget about now as of now just forget about you are having some measurable sets of you just forget about that okay lebesgue measures are basically outer measures if a set is a measurable set then the outer measure is said to be a lebesgue measure so if you have to prove something for the lebesgue measure if it is already proved for the outer measure that shall be extended right okay so what i'm trying to say here is the countable subadditivity on countable subadditivity of the outer measure shall be extended to the lebesgue measure provided you have the countable collection here we are talking about the countable collection here you are given with the sequence of measurable sets how are we going to relate these two things for which we just need only one one thing okay uh, elements of a countable collection can be arranged in a sequence okay so we have one more result that is elements of a countable set can be arranged in a sequence so with which you can easily say if you have a sequence then it has to be either countably finite or infinite if it is uh, if the range is some finite set then it is countably finite if not the range is going to be suppose if the range is infinite then you will have the collection to be a countable set so with which what we conclude is that thus ei the collection ei can be treated as a collection of 
countable sets. Then by the or if you just mark this result as 1 then by 1 we get Lebesgue measure of union EI is smaller than or equal summation MEI. So we just proved the first thing. Okay. Next we will have to prove if the sets are pairwise disjoint. Okay. So now uh, given sequence EI is a sequence of measurable sets okay and uh, assume EIs are pairwise disjoint that is EI intersection EJ is empty for i not equals j. Now we are about to consider two different cases that is uh, case 1 when e i is a finite sequence. So it means what the few sets the same sets are repeating in a sequence. Okay, so if it is so, then here also we are just going to make use of one of the results that we have already seen. That is, let A be any set and E1, E2 till En be a finite collection of a finite sequence of disjoint measurable sets then outer measure of A intersection union I runs from 1 to N E I E is equal to summation i runs from 1 to n m star of a intersection e i so this is the result that we have already seen okay let a equal to the entire real line okay since we are talking about the subsets of the real line and a can be any set right so any set in real line let me choose the entire real line to be my A. Okay. So if I have chosen the entire set, that is the whole set as my set, and if I make the intersection, okay, R intersection with any set E would be E itself. Am I right? Because R is the whole set. In that only we have taken some subset that is E, and when I make the intersection of uh, E with the entire R, I am going to get back E. If I make the union, I would get R. So, we will make use of that set theoretic property here. So, then we have then we have M star of R intersection with union I runs from 1 to N E I is equal to summation I runs from 1 to N m star of r intersection e i right so just before i have told you the uh, ideology so with which we can write it as m star of union i runs from 1 to n e i is equal to summation i runs from 1 to n m star of e i's so with which we just proved Okay, so we have just proved this result for the outer measure, right? Uh, 
we also know that or let me write that as the result okay since the collection of measurable sets is a sigma algebra finite union of measurable sets is measurable so if you talk about the outer measure of a measurable set that is the lebesgue measure okay why did we why did i state this result here just because here i have the finite union of measurable sets each ei is a measurable set each of this is a measurable set for all i runs from 1 to n so i know this shall be replaced with the uh, simply mei and here i have the finite union of this is the finite union of measurable sets so i have to talk about the measurability of this set if it is also measurable then i can say this outer measure equals the lebesgue measure okay here it is proved so we shall write m of union i runs from 1 to n ei is equal to summation i runs from 1 to n m of ei so hence m is finitely additive okay actually what is the thing that we have to prove we have to prove it is additive be it finite additive or countable additive we have to prove the additive property not the subadditivity right we have proved the additivity for the finite case now we'll have to prove it for the countable case okay for which okay here we started with the case one that is so when ea is a finite sequence now let us consider the case when ea is an infinite sequence infinite means here i am just talking about the countable of course if i am talking about a sequence it lands in the countability of pairwise disjoints that is the basic assumption that we just made okay here in this let me just collect the finite collection and i make a union and let me compare it with the uh, countable collection of course this is going to be the subset right so uh, this shall also be written as union i runs from 1 to infinity ei is a superset of union i runs from 1 to n ei okay uh, just okay now he, again since uh, countable union of measurable sets is measurable and a is contained in b implies outer measure of a is smaller than or equals outer measure of b using these two results what we have is outer measure of union i runs from 1 to infinity ei is bigger than or equals outer measure of union i runs from 1 to infinity ei since the countable union and the finite union of measurable sets are also measurable we just have it to be m of union i runs from 1 to infinity ei is bigger than or equals m of union i runs from 1 to n ei using the previous 
case we shall write this as summation i runs from 1 to n m of e i let me uh, just a minute okay this is there right so here i make an important observation if you just uh, look at this quantity and this quantity your lhs is independent of n right <clears throat> even if you add few more quantities to this it still remains okay that is since lhs of this inequality is independent of n we have Lebesgue measure of union i runs from 1 to infinity e i is bigger than or equal summation i runs from 1 to infinity m e i right let me mark this as equation 1 okay now using the finite subadditivity sorry from countable subadditivity by the countable subadditivity of uh, outer measure we shall write some a m of union 1 runs from 1 to infinity this is smaller than or equals summation i runs from 1 to infinity m of e i again here i just made use of these two results countable union of measurable sets is countable on the outer measure so this result from countable subadditivity we just prove the result for the outer measure Okay, not for the Lebesgue measure. So, measurable outer measure of a measurable set is Lebesgue measure. I am repeatedly saying this statement just because we are using it for repeated number of times. So, from 1 and 2, from 1 and 2, we conclude. m of union i runs from 1 to infinity e i equals summation i runs from 1 to infinity m e i this proves the countable additivity and this completes the proof right the next theorem, sorry, the next proposition that we have is En is an infinite decreasing sequence of measurable sets. Okay, decreasing sequence uh, that is a sequence with this property. Suppose if this is your E1, then your E2 is a part of it, E3 is a part of it. So this is your E1, E2, and let this be your E3. Okay, likewise it goes inner and inner and the measure of the outermost set is finite that is the basic assumption that we take with which we'll have to prove m of intersection i runs from 1 to infinity e i is same as that of limit n approaches infinity m e n okay so here actually what are they trying to say you find you try to find out the intersection of all possible elements in the infinite decreasing sequence and find the measure, find the Lebesgue measure of it. And if you wish to stop this by a particular stage n, in a general stage n, find the measure, find the Lebesgue measure and take limit n approaches infinity. These two are same. This can happen only when the, out, the Lebesgue measure of the outermost set, that is the first set is finite, this can happen. Okay, this cannot happen in all the cases okay let us start the proof so we are given that en is an infinite decreasing sequence of measurable sets
such that en plus 1 contained in en for all n right okay here let me just take e to be the intersection i runs from 1 to infinity e i and f i is some set that is e i minus e i plus 1 okay if i am just trying to define f1 okay here so if i try to define f1 that is nothing but e1 minus e2 so e1 minus e2 means only this portion i am not going to consider the portion that is inside this the shaded region is my f1 so if i have to find out my f2 let me just uh, Shade that in a blue color, you can very well see this is my F2. Okay, this is my F1. So, hope you get the idea of how we construct sets here, right? So, this is how we define these sets. Then we shall write E1 minus E. So E1 is the outermost set and I am just uh, I am just subtracting the intersection from it. It is going to be equal to union i runs from 1 to infinity fi. Okay. If I am going, going on and going on like this here inside which i i'll have only very few points which are removed from e1 okay so as of now here as of now i have just uh, got three sets let me explain you the idea with this three sets then you can extend it for a countable number of sets right so here if i find e1 minus e okay here, okay, uh, I'll have to do it in a green color. Okay, if I do something in green color, you can uh, just have that it is some rough work. Okay, so if I just make an intersection of E i's with i runs from 1 to 3, what would I get? I would simply get E 3 here, right? So this is my intersection. This is my E value. So I'll have to subtract E 1. Mm, I'll have to subtract E from E 1. This is, they are saying it is a union i runs from 1 to, uh, for all the sets we are defining, right? So here, hmm, here, uh, okay, let me simply write it as union f i, okay? So, you have found f1, union, you know what is f2, did you find f3 here? No, you are you cannot find it right just because you have no set which is inside e3 as of now just for this finite case you have no set which is inside e3 that can be subtracted from e3 so you have only f1 union f2 so if you just see uh, e1 minus e which is the shaded region be it be it in green color or in blue color only the shaded, re shaded region is here E1 minus E. That is exactly the same F1, F1 union F2. When you are doing it for the uh, countable case also, it is happening to be true. That is the thing that we have taken. And the sets Fi's are pairwise disjoint. Yes, of course it is true. It is constructed in a way that they are disjoint mutually. So, with this, we write M of E1 minus E is M of union i runs from 1 to infinity Fi. Since all these are disjoint, we can write this as summation i runs from 1 to infinity. M F I. Okay. 
what is this fi it is nothing but summation i runs from 1 to infinity m of e i minus e i plus 1 so ultimately what we get is that m of e1 minus e is summation i runs from 1 to infinity m of e i minus e i plus 1 so this tilde notation is used in our textbook that is why i'm just following this thing but what i'm what i mean by delta tilde till what i mean by tilde is that the set difference okay let me mark this as equation one i'm proceeding further since your e is contained in e1 we have measure of e1 is equal to measure of e plus measure of e1 minus e okay why is it happening if you just see you have this to be your e1 and this to be something like this to be your e okay you will have to find out the measure of this quantity measure of this quantity is measure of this and measure of this okay the shaded region of uh, shaded region in a uh, I'll have to collect the total measure that is equivalent to the measure of these two distances. That is what we wrote. Right? So, also, since E i plus 1 is contained in E i, we have the same thing M of E i is m e i plus 1 plus m of e i minus e i plus 1 okay here we are given with one more information that Lebesgue measure of e1 is finite and hence we shall say measure of e i which is smaller than or equals measure of e 1 which is smaller than infinity that is finite right also we have or therefore we have m of e 1 minus e is m e 1 minus m e let me mark this as equation 2 and I have m of e i minus e i plus 1 is m e i minus m e i plus 1 let me mark this as equation 3 thus from equation 2 <coughs> me1 minus me is me1 minus e so this is summation i runs from 1 to infinity m of e i minus e i plus 1 right so that is how by equation 1 so how did we get this this is by <coughs> equation 1 right so this shall also be written as limits n approaches infinity summation i runs from 1 to n m e i minus e i plus 1 so this shall also be written in this way so this is what this is limit n approaches infinity summation i runs from 1 to n this is m e i minus m e i plus 1 so this is again limit n approaches infinity and when you substitute the values inside you get 
ME1 minus ME2 plus ME2 minus ME3 and it goes till way this way MEN minus MEN plus 1 right so here you notice that the terms gets cancelled uh, so this and this gets cancelled this and this gets cancelled till this it will be cancelled and we will be left with only limit n approaches infinity m e 1 minus m e n plus 1 ok so finally what we have is that is m e 1 minus m e is limit n approaches infinity m e 1 minus limits n approaches infinity m e n plus 1 since this is independent of n we just get this to be m e 1 and minus limit n approaches infinity m e n plus 1 so here this m e 1 and this m e 1 gets cancelled and we will be left with minus m e is minus limit n approaches infinity m e n plus 1 minus on both sides gets cancelled and I will be left with limits n approaches infinity m e n plus 1 is m e right so what is this therefore ultimate result this e is the notation that we have taken right so m times of intersection i runs from 1 to infinity e i equals limits n approaches infinity you have n plus 1 i am just going to replace it with m just because whether i do it for the n or n plus 1 anyway that is a very larger quantity so i don't have to worry much about it so it it just follows so and this completes the proof of the proposition okay the next one is little woods first principle i am not going to prove this one so i i am going to leave this as an this proposition as an exercise to you people you are going to do it so let me just explain you what is given in the proposition you are given with some arbitrary set in real n then you will have to prove the following five statements are equivalent for any measure. Okay. In particular, if the outer measure is a finite quantity, then your final property gets satisfied. Right. So here you have the superset subset relation that we have to remember. If a set is measurable, then we are able to identify some open set or closed set. Okay. If you are about to identify an open set and let this be your uh, E, so in what they are trying to say here is that you can find out an open set, okay, an open set to which E is a subset. With that, if you just negate O minus E. Let this be your O. If you just find out this part, this part and take the uh, outer measure, that is a very small positive quantity. Okay. That is how it is going to exist. Then there is a closed set such that the closed set can be put inside, can be put inside the set E. Then what you do is that you find E minus F. It has to be a member of E but it must not be a member of F. So you get only this portion. Okay. So that portion's outer measure is going to be smaller than epsilon. That is a very small negligible quantity. Then there is a certain G delta. Already I told you people that G delta is the countable intersection of
open sets. F sigma means countable union of closed sets. In just a minute, I have a doubt about these two things. Let me just refer and tell you people now. And uh, with this open set or uh, closed sets, we'll have to prove g minus c, outer measure of g minus c is either 0 or e minus f is 0. In particular, if the measure is a finite quantity, then what happens? You, you can find out some finite union of open interval such that this is happening to be true. So, again this, I am I'm, I'm leaving this as an exercise. This is the... Uh, Symmetric difference. We call this as a symmetric difference. It is nothing but A symmetric difference B means it is A minus B union with B minus A. So this is the symmetric difference. We will have to prove it for the symmetric difference. Okay. So I just, uh, yeah. Countable intersection of open sets is G delta set and a countable union of closed sets is a F sigma set. Okay. So, you are identifying some G or F. It means what? Your F is some countable union of closed sets and your G is some countable intersection of open sets for which this property is being satisfied. This is what we will have to prove. So, at the end of this unit, we have Littlewood's three principles. Among the three principles, the first principle is this. I am leaving the once again I am telling I am leaving this as an exercise to you people. You just try it out. If possible, let us uh, try to prove this in the problem solving session. Thank you.